my friends. I'm going to be doing a pour on this canvas today. It's a, what is it? 16 by 16. But first I want to show you the dried results of the last couple of pours. This is the one that was done with the Artist Loft Ready Mix paints, which I diluted and used a bit of silicone. And I'm very pleased with the results there. And here is the St. Patrick's Day pour. Very abstract shamrock. <laughs> and this was done with Arteza paints and the polycrylic mix. And as you can see, both of them stayed just like they were when I left them. They don't change and grow overnight because of, of the um, mix. I always put the details of the recipe I use down in the description box. And those two paintings along with others will be added to my website by the time you see this. That size is um, $48 for 12 by 12. Okay, so I'm gonna do two cups for this canvas and I'm gonna fill one from dark to light and the other one from light to dark. And I'm also going to pour side by side um, as I fill the cup. It kind of gives you the um, split cup effect without having a split cup. So here we go. Oops, I wasn't paying attention to the amount. I'm just looking at the line, how nice it stayed. But can you see that? I mean, that's a split cup right there. All right, now I'm going to move to um, pink and silver. And oh, I'm using Masters, no, Modern Masters paints in silver, rose quartz, black pearl, and sachet red. And then I mixed up, I wanted another light color, so I mixed some matte metallics and deco art. And I added a little bit, maybe a, a sixth of it, of white satin enamel because I wanted it a little lighter. And who knows, maybe we'll get an interesting look. Okay, so now pink and silver. And I'm going to pour the pink on top of the black. I like the way that looks. And I like silver and red together, so that's my reasoning. And here we go. Okay, and now I'll put one layer of this lighter silver again with the satin enamel in there. Pour one layer of that on top of here. Okay, now I'll repeat that. Could reverse, but I think I'll I won't. Oops. Um, yeah. Okay, that's one. <laughs> and now I will start with the pink and silver. Oh, that's pretty together. Black and red. A 
layer of the light silver. And one more layer. The sticks are in the way. I should have taken them. Taking them out. Okay. I don't plan to do any ribbons. I will take the sticks out. But never say never, so I will reserve a little bit of paint in each color just in case. Okay, I had a little technical glitch there. I don't know what happened, but you didn't miss much. I just finished filling the cup, and then I poured the rest of the um, the one that had the bit of satin enamel on there. So now, time to pour. I think I'm just going to do kind of a ring and jiggle thing on one side, and then similar application on the other. So here we go. Oh, and I do want to look and see... Um, I'm going to pour from where it was half and half, I, you know, where I poured it and there was a line, so it's right around there. It's so fun to experiment with the way you pour it out. You know, mixing it up with a, a wiggle and a jiggle and a ring. I like that right there and that and this. Okay. I'm gonna turn it so it's easier for me to apply the paint. So let's see if it looks different because it should. Because this one that started out dark and ended up light because the light was at I filled it up first, so this should be the opposite. And so I should have, in fact, I'm going to do that. I should have started up here so it's next to the dark. Cover up that business there, kind of. Okay, and stop. Stop, I say. <laughs> okay. I certainly won't need to add any ribbons to this. It's plenty busy. And here we go.
I'm not a big pink fan. I don't mind losing some of this pink, although it looks nice with the gray. But I don't mind. Get rid of a good amount of it. Not gray, it's silver. When it dries, it should be quite pretty. These are all metallics, of course. Okay, as I tilt, I'm always watching areas that I like and trying to preserve them. I like this section here and and this. So I'm looking at parts I don't mind sacrificing and parts I want to keep and I try to keep that in mind as I move it around. Oops, I picked up the table covering there. And I always like a lot of movement in the painting. So that's that's good. Um, this is kind of kind of too similar, so I want to um, do something with that. What shall I do? There's a lot of paint on the surface here. I think I had too much. I've never had a problem with cracking though with this medium, so I'm not worried about that, but it could happen. Okay. Oh, I have a cat hair in there. That's nice. <laughs> um, well, I think I like it. Let's see. Should I try to remove that? It's not even my cat. <laughs> Our daughter, uh, we're cat sitting. Oh, come on. There. There we go. Okay. I think I like it. Got some great movement in the whole thing. And didn't get any kind of a satin enamel um, reaction like I. Thought might happen, but I I don't. I'm okay with that. I'll hit it with a some heat and see if anything happens. It just seems to be popping some air bubbles. So one little flaw there. I'm going to tilt that off. Should go easily. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at that. It's just staying put. Ugh. 
Okay. God, now I've got to bring it back. I know. Ridiculous. Okay. Let me turn it different orientations for you. We got a good mix of of colors there. Whoa, it's heavy. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't, it reminds me of something. I'm not sure what. Okay, well, there you have it. Um, I think it'll be very pretty when it's dry. I'll show you next time around. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.